Today's video is sponsored by Omaze. Head on over to omaze.com slash wrench for more information. Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. And behind me is one of two of our 2008 Dodge Chargers. Now this is the one that was used on screen as an extra car in the movie Need for Speed. And as we have kind of uncovered the onion a little bit that is this car's history, we've deemed it Project Roadblock, as it's just been a constant problem every step we've taken with the car, all the way to the point of having to buy a parts car, a whole nother car. And that's where things got really complicated because our parts car ended up being actually a whole lot better than this movie car, and we've been stuck with the decision of which car do we build? Do we build the original movie car that was just an extra, nothing that significant, that had structural damage, or do we build the blue car that was an Orlando PD car? And uh, let's just say your responses were amazing and overwhelming. And speaking of amazing, today's sponsor Omaze has got something awesome for you. Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating money to chosen charities all around the world. Their sustainable approach to fundraising means nonprofits can spend less time and money raising funds and instead focus on the needs of the communities they serve. Right now, Omaze is giving away a Can-Am Maverick X3 and a Chevy Tahoe Z71 to tow it with. Score off-road family fun with the ultimate off-road duo. The 2021 Can-Am Maverick X3 Max X RS Turbo RR with Smart Shocks features four-wheel drive with lockable front differential with Smart Lock technology. It comes finished in triple black, making 195 horsepower with some extra special features, like the digital display screen, ergo lock cockpit seating, 14-inch beadlock wheels, and 30-inch tires, Fox Podium Racing Shocks with 22 inches of suspension travel, Smart Shocks with dynamic dampening adjustment, LED headlights, and taillights. And to tow it to the off-road trails, the 2021 Chevy Tahoe Z71 comes with 355 horsepower, 20-inch fuel Rebel wheels wrapped in Toyo Open Country Mud Terrain tires, Rough Country Suspension Leveling Kit, Hill Descent Control, 25 and a half cubic feet of cargo space for your family and all the baggage that comes with them, 10.2 inch infotainment screen and a panoramic sunroof. This is such an amazing prize because nothing's better than pulling up to that off-road park and the ultimate tow rig with the ultimate off-roader behind it. Your donations go to help support the Boys and Girls Club of America. Boys and Girls Club of America helps inspire young people nationwide. They inspire and enable all young people, especially those who need it most, to reach their full potential. Their world-class club experience at around 4,700 locations nationwide helps ensure success is within the reach of all young people who enter the doors. With all members on track to graduate high school with a plan for the future, demonstrating good character, citizenship, and a healthy lifestyle. Enter for your chance to win a Can-Am Maverick X3 and a Chevy Tahoe Z71 to tow it with and support the Boys and Girls Club of America's great cause. Head on over to amaze.com slash wrench right now. One thing you will notice in the backgrounds, Ben Pack lifts in their shipping configuration. We've been working with them for a while to get these here and I'm excited that they have arrived, but we've got... Somebody's in the way with no rear end. Uh, we've got a four post that we're gonna put up over there and kind of in this general area, we plan to put that two post up. But right now, we've gotta get that silly thing fixed. So that's coming and being worked on kind of in videos, but we are here to talk about our charger. So some of the obvious things that we are going to aim to take off, obviously we want our bull bar, front bumper, the hood, we're gonna take our fenders because the fenders that are on the cop car have very clear Bondo in them. We're taking our doors because why not? They're highway patrol, easy to swap. We're going to be taking our deck lid, rear bumper. Again, if it unbolts, we wanna take it. So we're gonna get those swapped over. And of course, we're gonna do the doors on this side. I might even do the fuel door, why not? The other thing we're going to do is swap over this interior. Uh, it's got a lot of junk in it right now, but these seats, everything are in much nicer condition than what we have in the police car. Plus, if we ever put someone in the back seat, by using these doors, uh, they'll be able to get themselves out. Uh, if we remember before, uh, yeah, cop car doors, they don't open from the inside. It's a cop car. The doors aren't meant to be open from here. <sighs> Buy a movie car. Ugh. Ugh. 
they're uh, not intended to let people out easily. I kind of forgot that. We're going to pull off the spot lights here. They're broken. I may be able to get them fixed or maybe I will track down an outfitting company and try to get all the proper lights on it. So yeah, this is our last time seeing it as one whole assembly. I don't know. Part of me wants to build this one because it was in the movie, but it is one of 40. It's not a hero car of any kind. I don't know that it will ever be anything significant. And once you guys realize the full plan of what we are going to be doing and why we need the best foundation of a car as possible, you'll understand. And if you're upset by the decision to build the blue car, there are about 8,000 commenters that you can go argue with. Uh, for once, we're not going full questionable and uh, doing the smart thing. So let's get to work. As you can tell, we have been making progress on Roadblock here, getting the body parts off of him. And I'll be honest, it's a little bittersweet as I'm taking it apart. I was like, man, should we build this chassis? Should we build this chassis? And as we're tearing it apart and doing a little bit more work, I found the movie sticker, which almost made me want to just go ahead and put it back together and build it. So if we look here, P1, generally in the movie, Police one, it's the movie car. It's got the sticker. It's got that uh, little bit of lineage specialness. I don't know. But then I pulled the fender all the way off and it reminded me of its multiple salvage history, most likely crashed in the movie and <laughs> it's not a good chassis. So we are going to start on the right side, which 
and every bit of looking appears to have never been crashed. You see how smooth this inner fender structure is. We come down into the wheel well and it's nice and tidy. And then we come along the rocker and you can see how that is made. Relatively flat, nice spots for everything to stick in. But as we were taking apart the body parts on the other side, the rocker panel is supposed to pop in. It was riveted in and all of our brackets in the front, we knew there were some issues in the front with all the little extra extension brackets, but let me just say it is bad. So here is our inner structure and it has every dimension going on. That should be flat and smooth. And again, we can replace this. Here's two sections of structure that just ripped apart. It's crunched down here. We have a slight bow in the frame rail. So again, in a repair, you could fix this. We could. Down there, it's hard to really tell. It's more of a feel. But right in here, if I can get enough light, you see that big old buckle and crease where that entire inner fender is crunched in. And as we come down here, you see just more bend and wavering. If we come into the wheel well, you notice there's still some uh, wheel liner there. That's the original wheel liner. It broke and crashed and crunched so badly, that's just stuck. I cannot get it to pull out at all. Here is another frame reinforcement, just all of that. And these are replaceable parts, yes, but we're not done yet. Let me drop down. So again, rivets, but you see this entire rocker assembly is crunched and pushed in and our floor is bent and it goes the full length. And then that's not even including the major floor pan damage underneath the car, right by the fuel tank. So you can see that big old block, that was just to space it out enough that they could bolt a fender to it. That's one of the original bolts that held the fender on. So now they just have that little self-tapping deal. So it, it was one of those things where I saw the sticker and I got really excited about it being the movie car again and saying, hey, let's go back to plan A and build this thing. And then I saw how bad the damage is. And we're about making questionable choices. We're not about making stupid choices. And I have plans for roadblock A, B, whatever we're gonna ultimately end up as the final name. I'm still gonna call it roadblock. Um, but I've got plans that it needs to be a really good solid chassis. We need to have good sheet metal, but we're not a, a channel about doing 20 episodes of body work as we're slowly pulling all of this damage and slowly fixing it. We're about giving cars a second chance and then making them fast and fun. And I promise, you're gonna like how this ends up going. So we have got a few more body panels. We've got a trunk and rear bumper, and I'm gonna try to pop the seats out of it. And uh, let's finish our cosmetic teardown. And uh, yeah, it, it's kind of sad, but this, it's the right choice. I'm gonna keep saying it so that way I feel better about it. And uh, we'll, we'll hide that movie sticker, right? <laughs>
Okay, so we've got the interior pulled out and I quickly pulled the carpet up because I wanted to see what the floorboards look like on the driver's side because we had so much damage and it just, it reinforces the decision that it's not practical to build the movie car. Let me show you how bad it is. So we're gonna jump up front where you have a foot rest normally that it was impacted so hard it broke the plastic. So we've got the firewall pushed in and backwards there. So not only is that broken, as we start coming along the reinforcements, it's a little bit hard to see, but we have a ripple through the floor here and we can see that in broken tar coating. All through here, there's small just kind of waves and buckles. We have another pretty substantial buckle directly under the driver, but that's not where it's really bad. So that is what it should look like. See the floor, nice, almost 90 degree angle. You know, that's what you want it to look like. Um, yeah, <laughs> we don't look like that over here. You can see the floor is hammered way up. There is substantial crushing and crinkling. It's starting to rip the spot welds of the primary reinforcement. So this really is a chassis that you would have to take it almost completely apart to start rebuilding it out. By the time you're done with your floorboards and the entire rocker panels, it just, it doesn't make sense. If this was a star car of a little bit bigger of a blockbuster movie, you could see and justify putting this much effort into it this was just an abandoned car sitting in the back corner of a warehouse. And I kind of understand why, but I made the questionable choice and we bought it and we are not going to give up on the idea of the project. We are going to bring as much of its heart, soul and essence and keep it running. We are going to uh, continue building Project Roadblock, albeit in a new shell, but we're bringing all the soul, spirit and inspiration over and then once we get it working, we have huge plans. I'm just gonna keep teasing them because we're not finalized with them. I'm working on them all, but it's, it's gonna be spectacular if all of it comes out the way I want it to come out. So, yep, we've got everything out that we're going to this episode. We are going to get Roadblock out of the way, hopefully get the axle back under Johnny as uh, we're kind of working through timelines and weirdness so I can get my lifts up so we can finish stripping the shell down and uh, try to get us a running Dodge Charger because right now we've just got broken ones everywhere. But yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us as always. I'm Jared reminding you to always make questionable choices. And when it comes to buying a used car, make sure you check the floor pans, make sure they're not dented. Once again, thank you to Amaze for sponsoring this episode. Head on over to amaze.com slash wrench and enter for your chance to win a brand new Can-Am Maverick and a Chevy Tahoe Z71.